CTV News with Jackie Scantlebury. Good afternoon. Thick fog and highways like skating rinks led to some major collisions in southern Alberta this morning. The first one happened north of Coaldale at around 10 o'clock this morning. Nearly a dozen vehicles, including six semi-trailers, piled up on Highway 845, sending five people to hospital. Terry Boat reports. The wreckage was strewn for hundreds of meters along the highway. At least six big trucks were involved, one with its cabin box totally ripped off. It was part of a chain reaction collision that began with emergency crews responding to a three vehicle crash. Then it turned into four, and then it turned into five or six, and by the time we got here, the, you can see the carnage that's here now. And while I was standing here, another semi came and slammed into the wreckage. Emergency crews from Coaldale, Lethbridge and Picture Butte converged on scene, looking after what they describe as mostly walking wounded. The driver of this truck managed to escape with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. RCMP blamed the crash on a combination of factors, each one of them potentially treacherous. Heavy fog. Uh, black ice and poor visibility are all contributing factors. And people kept driving normal speeds and it just kept piling into other vehicles here. Nathan Woolman was driving this car when he pulled up behind a snow plow that was stopped on the highway. He knew there was a large truck coming behind him. And I just left my uh, vehicle as fast as I could so I wasn't going to get injured. Emergency responders say with so many vehicles, some traveling too fast for visibility and road conditions, it was a miracle they didn't have more serious injuries or anyone killed. Terry Vogt, CTV News, near Coaldale. But a second man is dead after another second vehicle crash this morning. It happened around 11 a.m. at the intersection of Highway 3 and Highway 509 to the Blood Reserve. RCMP say again the roads were icy and thick fog was making it hard for drivers to see. A semi was turning onto Highway 509 from Highway 3 northbound when an SUV hit the front end and then spun into the ditch. A second semi collided with the back end of the trailer. The driver of the SUV was standing outside of his vehicle when he was hit by a transport truck that had veered off the icy highway to avoid crashing into the rigs that were scattered through the intersection. Now I saw a truck, a semi truck right in the middle of the road and uh, right beside me there was the SUV so I didn't want to hit it. So I decided to go for the ditch. And next thing I noticed when I came down to a ditch there was already a car there. There was another SUV there and I couldn't stop. RCMP are still investigating. The name of the victim has not been released. Lethbridge Regional Police say tougher drinking and driving laws will make it easier to deal with drivers who are under .08, but still a safety risk behind the wheel. The changes would see a three-day suspension and possible car seizure for drivers caught with a blood alcohol reading between .05 and .08. The new law also calls for harsher punishments for repeat offenders who blow a blood alcohol reading over .08. The punishment increases each time that a driver is caught. Lethbridge Regional Police say there will be different paperwork, but it won't change the way the police do their roadside enforcement. The .05 was, was the threshold for a 24-hour suspension before. So you were receiving an administrative suspension prior to this, this new law. Now the, the suspension is longer and the, and the consequence is greater with this impounding of the vehicle. But their actual hasn't changed that much for, from a policing point of view. The bill still needs royal assent, which is expected to happen within a couple of weeks. Police say there will also be a period of education before the new law actually goes into effect. Now, there is a delay in the murder trial of a Lethbridge man. 26-year-old Harpal Singh Dillon is charged with second-degree murder and assault in connection with a stabbing death outside the Colehurst Community Centre last November. This man, 21-year-old J.J. Guy, died as a result of his wounds. The trial was originally scheduled for April. Now it's been slated for next December. Dillon has elected to be tried by judge alone. And Lethbridge Regional Police are trying to find a missing 16-year-old boy from standoff. Cohen Joel Dayrider was reported missing from the standoff area at the end of September. Dayrider is Aboriginal, about 5 foot 7, 160 pounds, with long black hair and brown eyes. Foul play isn't suspected, but police say they have exhausted all of their leads and are now turning to the public for help. If you have any information, please contact police or Crime Stoppers. 
The Alberta Securities Commission has issued an interim cease trade order against two Southern Alberta men and a Lethbridge investment company. The order is effective immediately against Rand Tyler Stevenson, Brent Ray Derricott and OCIQ Corporation. Investigators say that the men raised over $1.2 million from more than 50 investors between January of 2009 and September 2011. The money was purportedly to be used to obtain the release of funds from a billion dollar estate connected to the late Ferdinand Marcos of the Philippines. Philippines. Investors were promised returns between 100 and 150 times the amount invested. The commission says it intends to apply for an extension of the cease trading order within the next 15 days. Well, Dory, some foggy weather today, obviously, as we saw, and it's going to be chilly right through to the weekend. But then after that, some positive numbers. Yeah, we do have some positive numbers on the way. We had that, that mist situation this morning. Of course, that adhered to already slick conditions that were on the surfaces of the road. We're kind of in between two systems now. We have another system to the north that's going to be affecting us as we head into Wednesday, not as much as the system that blew through on the weekend. But you're right, when we get into the weekend, temperatures are looking better. I'll tell you all about it in just a couple of minutes. All right, Dory. Alberta's education minister says he has made a commitment to school boards to try to shelter them from the unpredictability in provincial funding. Thomas Lukasik was in Lethbridge today meeting with students and faculty at Chinook High School. Lukasik says provincial revenues can fluctuate as much as 30 percent from year to year, but he believes steps must be taken to help give school boards across the province the resources they need to provide a proper education for students. We, we believe that education system is not an expenditure, it's an investment. It's one of the most fundamental services that a province can provide to its, to its citizens. So we will try to shelter education from as much of that fluctuation as possible. Both, uh, it is important to have predictability on, on the money flow into the system and also on money flowing out. So we will be looking for stability both in funding and in expenditures. Lukasik says students in Lethbridge were telling him they'd like to see more opportunity to earn post-secondary credits while still in high school, but he says that he may encourage students more to stay in school. Well, an annual write-a-thon gives people in Lethbridge the chance to make a difference in upholding human rights. Amnesty International held its fifth annual Right for Rights campaign Saturday. The event coincides with the anniversary of the signing of the 1948 Declaration of Human Rights. Community members gathered to create letters and cards to support people around the world, and some of this year's letters target cases in Afghanistan, Nigeria and Colombia. We send letters directly um, to the government uh, that we are appealing to or um, sometimes we're actually having a greeting campaign so we can send greeting cards to the individuals who are either imprisoned or to family members who have had um, uh, family members who have been killed or murdered due to peaceful protests. Amnesty International Lethbridge tries to send out a thousand letters from each Right for Rights campaign. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in Lethbridge thanks to some city staff members. Lethbridge Electrical Department staff volunteered their weekend to hang Christmas decorations. Nearly 1,000 LED light ornaments are now hanging along major streets. Electric staff donate their time to decorate for Christmas each year, and this year they even enticed Santa to help out. I put my uh, thing business aside and I said I'll come down and, and help out the true spirit of Christmas here on the streets of the city of Lethbridge helping out the electrical department. So uh, here I am and I got to make a fast trip back to the North Pole tonight. And the decorations will stay up until the new year. Coming up next in the markets, it was a tough day for a lot of the markets. Here are the closing numbers.